And welcome back for episode 2 here in Saigon. We're teaming up today again with my friend Caroline to explore the heart of Saigon, District 3. Known for its abundant street food, we are going straight to the source, the Banco Market. A market near and dear to Caroline's heart as she grew up eating in this market. So come with us as we explore this traditional Vietnamese market full of generations of vendors and delicious food stalls. Is this a market that will be here 10 years from now? Because it's on uh, third generation. That's the thing. A lot of people, they prefer to go to shop in the supermarket. Right. No longer in this place mm -hmm. anymore. But yeah. I think this wants to survive because my mom still likes to shop here. Everything is here is fresh. Right. And you can have some item that you cannot find in the supermarket. So this That's is the first not. thing we're going for? Yes. Okay. We're going to go here. And this is steamed rice cake, bánh cuốn. Bánh cuốn, bánh cuốn. Dạ, con chào bà. She takes the rice flour, flattens it out, steams it, yeah. layers it, and then stuffs it with a ton of things. And then what's up with the little dipping mixture we got here? It looks like nook mom, but almost like watered down. Okay, in Vietnam culture, the dipping sauce, go along with each dish, mm -hmm. is totally different. Okay. This one is the mouth of uh, fish sauce. Water, sometimes we don't use water, we use coconut water if oh, you are in the south. Right. It's even more taste Okay, I like that, I like that. Yeah. How do we construct uh, the perfect bite? Okay, so normally you want to pour it. Okay. Or you just take one, if you like chili. That rice roll. Oh, I can add some chili to this? Yeah, if you like oh, chili, beautiful. but the cabo is spicy. They're already wanting it. Perfect. No, let in that, let in that. I think I'm a pour. Let me get same time with you. Yeah, I like yeah. a pour. Then All right. just bite All right. into a mouth. Perfect. Quite ready? Let's One, go. two, three. Mm. Mm. Flavor pack filling. You get that umami pork and mushroom mixture. Then it gives you that mint texture. That super slick rice roll. Mm -hmm. Love that. Mm. And what I love is just all the little fried bits on top. Mm. Oh my That's gosh. A fried shallot. I love it. Most yeah. Vietnamese dishes have like the fried shallots on top. Yeah. Mm, some dishes have something. They don't have, but it's just for me to bring out the flavor. I gotta say, you did, but I think I'm definitely a poor person. I like to get over here mm, and make sure I get all over. plenty of that sauce. It's the way to get after this. So the winner for me is these actual rice rolls. I mean, they must be going through a lot of these a day, right? A lot of buckets of rice flour. Uh, uh, she said that the, she actually makes the rice flour. Oh wow, she makes she the rice like, flour. Like the batter. Okay. Which they blend it in their own technique. Mm -hmm. And usually it's going to be one to two uh, buckets per day. One to two buckets. And these are not small buckets. I mean, that's almost, I mean, I, I kind of, yeah, you from the... I'm from where we like say like five gallon buckets. Yeah. That's like a five gallon bucket over yeah. there. Like it's a pretty big bucket. Mm -hmm. Making it every morning fresh. Yes. And how long has she been doing this for? She opened a house in 1977. 1977. And is she going to continue to do this in the future and then pass it to the next generation? That's we have to say. Right. Because sometimes daughter maybe not having too much passion mm -hmm. that's a problem in every Italy right get that because we don't know if they continue the second generation or third generation so we just wish that one of them still have the passion for that okay. and they get along with the business okay. so this market mm -hmm. really goes deep like because mm -hmm. you know what the name of the market is Banca uh -huh. Bank uh, is chessboard in English, so it's the street look. It looks like a chessboard. Okay. It's kind of like sectioned off, but yeah. it really like you can just keep working our way back. Mm -hmm. 
Đây, à, xin chào. Chàng trai này nói là chàng trai này ăn ở đây rồi. <cười> Right. So you got these almost like again. Is this a rice flour? Yeah, rice batter. Uh huh. And then it's got almost like a little turmeric in it, or what makes it the yellow color? Yeah, turmeric. A lot okay. of people when they first come here, they were thinking it's because of egg. It's making it a little yellowish. You right. Say, no, it's turmeric, but just the right amount of turmeric. Otherwise, it's gonna be beautiful. And then I'll see a little little uh, little shrimp here. A little fresh shrimp here. We have green onion. We have mung bean. Yeah, I see the mung bean on top. Already steamed. Okay, so one for you. One for me, then you stuff other types. Just whatever you want? Yes. Uh, some people don't like this one because this upside down, her shape mm -hmm. is fishman. Uh, you can smell great, it. It's yeah. a little bit fishy, fishy. right? Hi, okay. Basil. I think I have enough lip. You have enough? Like, okay. you have everything. Is this everything good? Inside? I mean, you tell me, you're the expert. <laughs> So a little bit of this and a little bit of uh, oh a double dip or double yeah. dip in here okay maybe I don't go for that because I'm not a bit oh. fan of it so what? much no uh, coconut gravy is like right up my alley I'm it, going this is a modern version I'll I'll get I'll get your portion for me okay One more time. I love it because you get the inside. It's just fried up, so it's nice. It's crispy. It's greasy, but then it's refreshing because you put all the herbs, the lettuce. You get a little bit of sweet, little bit mom. I, I, I think that is kind of like the southern way. Right. You have so many herbs. Right. Every packet and every single dish. I mean, she's clearly popular here because she has not stopped, just constantly turning them, constantly throwing the batter in the little frying pan over here. She's. I mean, these have been coming in and out. Yeah. I mean, ours are still piping hot. But what I love about this one specifically uh -huh. compared to like a ban xiao is when they do it perfectly, the edges are crispy, but then you still get that ooey gooeyness yes. on the inside. Yeah. So you get the best of both worlds. <laughs> Look at this though. Like, I guess what I enjoy about this market is it's not a market just placed in a random spot. It's in a local community. Because yes. right here, there are a few shops, but you just look up, people live here. It just feels so close and so homey when you walk down this alley. Yeah, and, and every single alley kind of look the same. So when my friend coming here, they always got lost. Right. So I have to say, hey, you just come in front of the alley. Just wait me there. I'm going to pick you up. So who uh, comes here to shop? Are these locals shopping for their families? Or is this like people buying for their own stall to run a business? Uh, two reasons. Two. For the family and also for the business. But for the business, they come here more quick earlier. Mm -hmm. Where are they coming from? Are they from Ho Chi Minh City? Are they coming from the outside? Uh, most of the vendor, they come from some days in here, like in Saigon, even in this uh, area. But some, they are outskirts of Saigon. Right. Or even from another province. And then they come in early morning? Yes, they come in here early morning. So that's even touched me more, to be honest, because some, they travel by bus or they come with their scooter. But you know that with this amount, massive of goods, right? Some of them, even if you if you don't see them in the local market, maybe unfortunately on the way there was an accident. Really? So it's a it's a big risk for really a low reward, probably, right? That's why when you shop in the local market, it's a lot of meaning right. behind that. Is you support the local, you also support the culture, and like giving them a little bit more motivation to work every single day. I'm okay with this bag. Yeah. 
So I've eaten a lot of Vietnamese meals, but this actually has more bamboo shoots than I've ever seen. Is this like, and then duck noodles makes me think, is it Chinese influence or? Yeah, Chinese one a little bit. Okay. From the, from, to the north. Mm -hmm. And the original the family is come from the north. Okay, so again, this is more of a northern style dish. Yes, but it's settled down in Saigon. Okay. In the southern. Yeah. Using a glass noodle. Glass, uh, yeah, glass noodle or I call it cellophane noodle. And the thing make this noodle outstanding is not only the bamboo shoot, but it also the dipping sauce. Okay. Try this and let me know what you think. What's the flavor inside? Whoa, there's a lot going on there. Mm, can you predict that what it is? There is some ginger in there. Yeah, there's a is. lot of ginger. Wow. And look at this duck. It's not just a lot of bones like you see with most of it. There's a lot of juicy meat on this. Yes. She throws it in this little saucer. It's just swimming in its own juices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're right though, that duck mom and that ginger. You almost don't get a lot of the duck meat flavor at first because you're really hit with the dipping sauce flavor, yeah. but then you just get the nice, soft, tender, dark duck meat. Yeah, and it's a balance the taste, right? Mm -hmm. The contraction, mm -hmm. so nice. That's why it's good though. Mm -hmm. My gosh, you could dunk anything in this broth. Mm. Mm. Really tastes like a duck chicken noodle soup. Like this is something that I would want when I was like feeling a little bit down and I need something to kind of heal me. Ah, oh, healing food. Yeah, this is some healing, like, make you feel good. Ah, oh, hangover, like, the next day. Not like hangover, but like, you got the, you got some type of sickness. Mm-hmm. Mm. The whole process of cooking, including the broth, including preparing the meat, is start from 2 a.m. in the morning. Really? 2 a.m. in the morning and finish at 6 a.m. Okay, and then she starts serving. Yeah, start, start serving and it's end around 10.30 or 11. Sometimes when you're coming here on a, like a busy day, around 10, mm -hmm. it's already finished. You right. don't have any bowl left. I'm glad we got a bowl. <laughs> so, you know, you grew up really close to this market. You've been coming to it since little. Has growing up so close to this market helped make food a big part of your life? Yes, it is. Like, where does your passion for food come from? My passion for food, I think, is to make people understand the right way of the Vietnamese cuisine. Mm -hmm. Because some there's some misconception. Also, I think it's become of my family. Right. My dad's side is related to the royal family, and it used to taking care of the food in the imperial palace. So I think it's in your blood, like right. you said. Well, I think you're rare too, because one common theme with the three places we've gone is, it's a lot of hard work for maybe yeah. not much reward, but I feel like you're somebody where keeping that tradition and passing it on, it's worth the work and the effort. Yeah. Like, we technically really will wish that all these play have a next generation right. to have a passion to run the business, continue right. to run the business. Otherwise, it's going to be distinguished. Mm -hmm. Like so, we need to introduce all the dish to the young generation and explain to them why it's good, how benefit some some dishes, how benefit. Like you said, if you are sick, you're having this one. Oh you have gosh. ginger. But the things are, it's have a dog meat, which is in Vietnamese culture. Exactly. It's a full package of nutrition. I would fake sickness to get these duck noodles. <laughs> you don't have to. But I really believe that you got to fake sickness to just to eat this one. I will. <laughs> you don't have to. And another huge thank you to Caroline. And of course, always a thank you to our sponsors at Chef's Tour. These videos would not be possible without them. While they may not have a location here in Saigon, if you want a true local food experience like today, make sure to check them out. They're all over Southeast Asia, India, Latin America, and even Europe. Y'all at the Maximum Kind of Eats. Catch you at the next video.